This is H1.5. The shoe is a low price with almost half of the Nike Winflow 8 price. Quite similar midsole and outsole pattern. Does this H1.5, which is made in Indonesia, will be the Nike Winflow 8 killer? Let's put the shoe on the test and find out.
Copy song everyone, my name is M. Sanin. First of all, a disclosure that I need to provide that is I purchased all shoes here with my own money and no one asked me to make this video. This is my record only and to share experience and thought on the shoe. I made my review on the Winflow 8 in previous video which you can find in, in the link in this minute. My main point in the review was this Winflow 8 is not compatible for me but of course it might be fine in you. It depends on the preference. The upper, especially at the toe box, is too restrictive where I can feel that the shoe is quite tight, pressing to my toes although the size is true to size, similar to my previous Winflow 7. Also, the breathability for hot climate condition is not quite good, however, the also durability is excellent. Now, let's see if this 910 Hayes 125 is the real contender or the killer for the Winflow 8. In this Hayes 125 to date, I already run about 70 km with long run up to 15 km and Winflow 8 about 100 km, mostly 5 km and the longer was 8 km. First, we go to the sum of the spade of the Hedge 115. First, with approximately 10 mm drop. It is a neutral shoe. There is no A zoom pocket unlike the Winflow 8 but uses the Airflex midsole. Next, with the sizing and weight of the shoe. My size is UK 8 or US 9 and it is true to size with the thumb more at the big toe to the end of the shoe. The toe box has much more room for those to splay unlike the Winflow 8. The weight of the shoe, the ball of these uh, shoes, US 9 is approximately for this uh, H125 is 250 gram compared to 270 gram in Winflow 8 for this similar size. Let's talk about the detail of the shoe. First, the upper. It is a hyperweb. Okay. This is a hyperweb. Protective upper tech and seam block technology with a polyester TPU plastic, a monolayer, and a bit of see through toe box upper. You can see my fingers in the inside of the shoe. Okay, you can see this tongue. It's a very thin, it's a very thin and non padded, and also it's not gasseted where it is not connected to the upper lining of the shoe, but it has, a, it has an inset to hold the tongue in place with this lacing. The lacing is pretty standard and a runner's knot can be applied to this shoe so because there's an additional hole in the shoe. The heel collar is high, quite high, right, in here, with a minimal padding around the heel with soft feeling on the fabric. The heel count is a bit flexible compared to Winflow 8 as I can press the heel counter forward, okay, unlike this wind, uh, Windflow 8, which is quite stiff, okay. And about the overlays, we can see the few rubbers overlays at the different places, uh, at both sides of the, the heel, and also a large part at the toe box end, okay, so this one. Next, we look at the insole or sock liner. So this is the uh, insole. It is approximately 15 gram with the design of hexa cushions technology from EVA with the uh, purpose of, to minimize the temperature in the shoe. I can say that uh, the insole also provides some cushioning for a little bit of bounce effect during run. In the midsole, the midsole design of this 910-125, uh, the 19H-125 is so much like Winflow 8 with the lines and the curves are almost similar. So that uh, is 19 get the midsole design from Nike? It's a question mark here. Hmm. But anyway, there is no easy published information on the in the stack height. But if you have the right values to do comment below. And my approximation is about 10 millimeter drop. Okay, and then uh, similar with the uh, Windflow 8, which is the also a 10 millimeter drop. A durometer estimation of the midsole is almost as uh, soft as Windflow 8. Okay, if I press this uh, the midsole, there is um, softness and um, both of these quite uh, have the same uh, characteristic of uh, softness when uh, I press this. So I think they have the same technology, really, from the EVA or the Cushlon form. 
So that's why my question before is, is 19 get the missile design from Nike? Based on the uh, published note, it has this 19 uh, has 1.5, the midsole is from the EVA with the density or the hardness that is suitable to support the compressions during the run. And um, 19, call it a rapid form and rubber with a flex sole. So it's a pressing this is quite, um, it is has some of the uh, softness. Okay? While this Windflow 8 is called Kushlon form in the midsole with a zoom pocket in the heel and the forefoot. Let's do a twist and bend test. It is twistable so that this is more like a neutral shoe. Okay, if you can look at this, it is uh, twistable, but it's not easy. You need uh, some force to, to twist. Okay, and uh, then the bend test or the flexion. Okay, it can be bent below the toe ball area and also in the middle. Just to compare with the uh, Windflow 8, uh, it is also the same uh, flex. Okay, you can bend this easily, but at the uh, center of this uh, shoe, it is quite hard to, quite stiff to bend at the middle of the shoe. Overall, this shoe is definitely for neutral running shoe. Now we take a look at the outsole. There is a large part of uh, mixed EVA rubber positioned at the surface uh, with some exposed form at the foot arch area. The exposed form at the heel center groove. So this is a groove all the way to the forefoot end. Also, there is a flex groove in the middle foot to the forefoot area. With this design, it's very much like what we have in this. But what is the difference between this Haze 125 outsole with Windflow 8? The outsole in Windflow 8 has a wider surface than the Haze 125. However, both have almost similar pattern, which is organic modified waterproof pattern. They have the same number of flex groove. Okay, so this is a flex group. One, two, three, four, five. And also in Windflow, Windflow 8, which is um, there is a one, two, three, four, five groups also. And also there is uh, some uh, small groups at the center and at, at the middle of these um, main groups. Okay? Also the same, one, two, three, and four. Whereas in this haze, one with five, there are also one, two, three, four. Okay? Below the arch of this uh, the, this haze, one with five, to the heel, they have quite different uh, rubber sole design. Where haze, one with five has the exposed form, that definitely reduce the weight of this shoe compared to this Windflow 8 where there is no um, exposed form at this um, the side of the shoe. One more thing, the Windflow 8 also surface is almost flat. Okay? This is a flat, okay, almost flat, but in has 1.5, it, ha it has a curvy surface from the uh, side to side of the shoe and also in the Heel. Now the durability predictions. After 100 km wind flow ahead, I see minimal way in the usual location, which is near to the midfoot, to the forefoot, and the side of the shoe. Okay, so you can see that each of these um, waffle pattern, and also at the side, it is minimal. Okay, but uh, whereas in this uh, haze 1.5. After 70 km of run, it's not yet 100 km, but after 70 km of run, I can see that the wear rate, in my opinion, is faster than wind flow 8. So I can say that the heads, one with have outsole, could go around 500 km. Just to compare, take a look at this wind flow 7 outsole. So this is the conditions of the similar outsole pattern. This shoe still can be used. Overall, what I can conclude on this H125, it is a light shoe and I would say that I enjoy running in this shoe for my speed work. It is from landing on the foot with some bouncing, but not quite bouncing compared to Windflow 8. And it is quite breadable upper. However, I think that if the rubber overlays at the toe box upper is reduced, then it will be more breadable and further reduce the weight of the shoe. Next. The insole hexa pattern, 
Okay, if you look at this, uh, the insole, insole, this hexa pattern, it is not quite suitable for the long run as I can feel this, the holes on my underfoot. So I think that 19 should cover the, some of the hexa holes in a few locations to avoid this, especially below the heel and also at the forefoot in some of the location is in, at the both foot. So it is somehow could be a killer to Winflow 8 that it can be multi-purpose uh, from easy run, long run and speed sessions. Only that uh, Winflow 8 has better midsole and also durable outsole. Finally, what am I going to do with the shoe? Although that it is advertised that the shoe can be used for long run up to 42 km, but I will not use for that very long run. So um, first I will put the shoe on my shoe rotations for run up to 10 km and, and specifically for tempo, some fat leg and also speed interval. And so because that is the forte of this shoe. So I think that's all for this time. I hope this simple review will give you some light under the shade and to know that there is an affordable shoe out there that is comparable to the higher price shoes. Until then, thank you and see you again. Bye bye.